everybody. Welcome to Mrs. Elefante's virtual classroom, where science learning is fun. Hi everyone. Hello to my earth science students of NMCA. This is Mrs. Ivy Elefante, and this video is a supplement to your thermal convection lab, your second portfolio for the class. Now, I did a tabletop demonstration for you guys because I know some of you don't have the materials available at home, so I'm already doing this for you. All you need to do is grab a copy of your thermal convection lab and observe what is happening in this very short experiment about thermal convection and answer the questions along the way. And by the way, if you have questions, let me know in the chat in our live lesson. The goal for this lab is for you to know how the heat is transferred through convection. Here are the materials that we need for this lab. One regular plastic bin, five thick cardboards, five plastic cups, chocolate or wax, red and blue food coloring, paper towels, very cold water, hot water, syringes, and ice cubes. Part 1 is convection. Step 1. Fill the bin with very cold water. A little ice is preferable, up to a depth of 4 inches, like so. Step 2. On a flat table or desk, place 4 of the plastic cups upside down on top of the 4 squares of cardboard. These cups will support the bin of water so that the 5th cup of hot water can slide underneath. Place the bin on top of the four inverted cups so that the bin is steady. Step 3. Draw some of the red food coloring up into the pipette or a syringe and then insert the syringe into the center of the cold water bin to deposit the dye just above the bottom of the bin. Expel the food coloring slowly so that it stays mostly in a dense circular area. Step 4. Using the blue food coloring, place two more circles of dye on either side of the red dye, about two inches to the left and to the right. Remember to expel the dye slowly so that it stays in dense circles near the bottom of the water bin. Number five, fill the last cup with very hot tap water. Carefully slide it under the cold water bin so that it is under the circle of the red dye. And number six, observe how the dyes move within the bin as thermal energy travels through the system. It may take a few minutes to see the changes. Observe closely what will happen to the movement of the red and blue dye. By observing, you should be able to describe the motion of the red and blue dyes in the bin. Draw a simple labeled diagram to show the movement of matter and energy. Use arrows to show how the dyes spread out, come together, or change direction. Then, provide a brief written explanation to supplement your drawing. This question is worth 4 points. Also, compare what happens with a red dye in the water bin with what happens to a hot air balloon surrounded by cool air. This question is worth two points. Recall that matter cannot move without energy. What is the energy source that moves the red dye? What is the energy source that moves the blue dye? This question is worth two points. Question five. Why is the motion of the water in the bin considered a cycle? What could stop the cycle? What could accelerate it? This question is worth three points. Part two, surface forces. Empty the plastic bin and refill with fresh cold water to a depth of four inches. Repeat steps three and four to add food coloring to the bin. To model tectonic plates floating atop the asthenosphere, melt some chocolate or wax. Using a spoon, add the melted substance to the cold water in two or three locations. 
you may need to place an ice cube atop each floater to help it solidify or to model a more massive plate. Repeat steps 5 and 6 and record your observations. In which direction do the floating pieces move? Repeat steps 7 through 10 two times to try new locations for the floating chocolate or wax, or to be certain that the behaviors you observe are consistent. Question number 6. Describe the forces that moved the floating pieces of chocolate or wax during part 2 of the activity. How did the forces relate to the direction of the water flow in the bin? This question is worth two points. Question 7. Water has low viscosity or thickness. How might the movement of the dyes change if a fluid with a higher viscosity is used? This question is worth one point. Question number 8. Evaluate the food coloring and water bin model. What are its strengths and limitations in modeling thermal convection? This question is worth four points. There you have it, guys. So I hope you were able to answer the questions on your portfolio. And if you have more questions, please do not hesitate to call me or send me a webmail. All right. See you later. Bye.